Have you ever had a gut feeling that you did not follow and then you found out that your gut was actually telling you the truth all along? Find out how to really trust your gut instinct and follow your gut in all areas of your life. Hi everyone, I'm Diana Palm of dianapalm.com and today we're going to discuss your gut feeling, how to follow your intuition. How can you tell if following your gut is right or wrong? Sometimes our life experiences are actually based on earlier things that we've lived through, most often in our early childhood. So if we grew up in a family where there was a lot of chaos and a lot of arguing and things like that, we've actually created a lot of subconscious programs that draw more and more of those experiences to us. And often what happens is when we're grown up, once we begin to see those patterns emerge within new relationships, we feel it in our gut and we feel danger, we feel like we need to get out, and it creates a cycle of always calling in new people and new energies and then having to leave because we're feeling that fear and that overlap feeling that it's happening again and that our patterns are repeating and that we may be in danger. About a hundred years ago, British scientists discovered that we actually do have what's called a second brain and it exists in our gut. This is why we feel things so deeply and we always feel it in our gut. Sometimes it leads us in a good way and sometimes it leads us in a bad way. Most often it will lead us in a good way unless we're ignoring it. But I want to make this a little bit easier for you to understand and clarify some things because I've been in this industry for a very long time and I teach people all the time how to tap into their intuition and how to be able to trust themselves in any given situation. So first of all, it's very important for you to know that whatever programs are running in your current mind are caused and created from your early childhood. That's why we tend to have many, many patterns of behavior and different similar relationships over and over and over. So once those programs are in there, it actually takes subconscious deprogramming to create and set a new pattern for yourself, to create a new life experience so that you may begin drawing in new people, places, and things, new circumstances for your life, more sense of safety, peace, and joy, and more empowerment overall. And that's really what is involved with subconscious reprogramming is getting the second mind in your gut, your gut instinct, and your intellectual mind and subconscious mind to be on the same page so that when you actually do have a gut reaction, you can trust it. The easiest way to actually tell if you're being triggered from something in the past based on old programs is that when you feel that feeling in your gut of dislike, discord, or fear, is to be able to stop for a moment, take a breather, and literally close your eyes and take a few deep breaths in and then blow it out. If you do this about three times, it'll really calm you down and center you, allowing you to refocus on what's really going on in the now. If you do find that your triggers are that it reminds you of someone else from the past who hurt you, it reminds you of a situation from the past that hurt you, then this may be an indicator that you have some programming and healing to do around your subconscious blocks and fears, that you're actually still carrying with you old traumas that have been unhealed and you're calling in other people to replay the same scenario with you again. And why do we do this? We do this for one reason and one reason only, because we need to heal it. We need to heal the initial situation that caused this pain and trauma for us. And until we do that, we're set on autopilot to recreate, 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 and we will always draw in people who will recreate these unhealthy patterns with us. So that at some point, it'll get so big and so out of hand that it will become that imperative and that important to heal it. Now, I work with a lot of people in relationships, and one of the main things that people say is, I always have a gut feeling, and I always know when my boyfriend or girlfriend is cheating. And they have a very, very fine-tuned sense for this. And because of that fine-tuned sense and the amount of focus and attention that they put on developing the sense, they actually attract new partners to them that are repeating patterns. And so their new partners come in with a willingness or susceptibility to cheat as well so that it can go round and round and fulfill the programs that they already have playing. 
So this sounds very counterintuitive, but it's actually the way that the universe works. The universe draws to you experiences that you're already programmed for. So one of the ways that I'd like you to learn how to really trust your intuition and really be able to listen to and trust that gut feeling is to really take a moment when you're going through something and be very, very clear to discern, is this an actual repeat pattern or are you seeing it the same way as what you're used to? Sometimes when we've had unhealthy family relationships, we begin to attract more people to us, partners, friends, coworkers, that are recreating those same patterns that we've experienced earlier in our lifetime. It's really important that we can actually discern what is going on so that we don't begin to think that the whole world looks exactly the same and that everyone that shows up in our life is gonna behave exactly the same and keep instilling fear in us and that need to leave or that need to separate ourselves or leave a situation. So what I want you to do is begin to focus on different things than you may be comfortable focusing on within a relationship. When you've attracted a partner to you or maybe you're in a long-term relationship already, it's important to really get out of your box and bubble, get out of your old paradigm and old ways of thinking and begin to really focus on the good within your partner. By focusing on the good within your partner, you'll actually be able to draw out new behaviors and new different characteristics within the relationship that you will actually find much more healthy and much more beneficial for yourself. I'm not asking you to go into denial, but if you do focus on the good, I guarantee you more and more good will come forth because we are always operating on our subconscious programs. And as soon as we enter relationship with another person, we begin to play back and forth our own programs with each other. If one person in the relationship has had subconscious reprogramming and healing on the DNA level, they may no longer be a fit for an old relationship because there won't be those old grooves and those old patterns to connect in with. So as one person heals and raises higher, it's really important for your spiritual vibration that your partner also does the same healing work so that they can come in at a higher level and connect with you there. This will actually create a dynamic within your relationship where you can both evolve together and you can both improve, you can both heal, you can both let go of old paradigms and old patterns from your early childhood and begin to live a really fresh, new and present relationship with each other in a brand new way. That's why I say that before you ever do any soulmate attraction, that you actually worked on yourself to elevate yourself out of your childhood programs. Otherwise, you're most likely to draw in somebody who will trigger you and replay those early childhood programs with you over and over again. Many people are going through a spiritual awakening and they're really taking ownership and accountability for the things that they've lived through, but not in a way of blaming. It's not about blaming. It's not about which parent did what or what their siblings did. It's about how am I programmed? What am I currently programmed for? And a really good way to find out the answer is to actually look at your early childhood and see what kind of relationship patterns existed there and which ones are still occurring today. If you really break it down, you'll most likely find that all your relationships have triggered you in the same ways that you were triggered in your early childhood. And if you haven't moved beyond that and found a very fulfilling, lifelong partner that you can grow with trust and respect, you probably would benefit from some repatterning from early childhood relationships. And this can be achieved through subconscious reprogramming. There's nothing worse than falling in love and going through this initial excitement and rush of exploration and getting to know somebody new. And then once you enter a relationship, finding that they're just exactly like the person you left behind. And this is how many people spend their entire adult lives, going from one to the next to the next. So eventually it's best to just stay put as long as you're not in danger, as long as you're not in a physically abusive relationship. If you're just in a relationship where you still have some things to work out, there's some patterns that you can see emerging that you've been through before and that were probably created in your childhood. It's best that you stay put and do your healing right where you are. That way you have the opportunity to elevate the current relationship that you're in and really reveal to you if this person is your soulmate and has the greatest potential to love you and grow with you or not. And if they're not, you definitely will call that in once you've done this healing.
while we do tend to have these feelings in our gut, our instinct and our reactions in our gut, most people see this as a weakness because this is an area that we store a lot of fear. Most often it is not relevant to the current situation that's going on. But many of you don't even realize that in the second brain, in your gut, this is actually a storehouse of massive amounts of energy. So this is often thought of as a weak area that holds our pain and our trauma, but I want you to think about it as your storehouse of massive amounts of energy. This is the true source of your energy and your power that you can derive all kinds of new actions from. So the next time you start to feel a gut instinct and you want to kind of step away and you're not sure and you're feeling triggered maybe from things from your childhood, take that moment to discern if it's currently a threat or if this is from your childhood or previous relationship. And if you do discern that it's from somewhere else in your timeline, it's not current, it's not a present threat, go ahead and tap into that inner strength that you naturally have in your gut call upon that to move you forward through the situation in a new way. If you still feel like you would benefit from some repatterning and subconscious reprogramming, we can set up a private session. I work with clients all over the world and one of my favorite things to do is see them move forward from their old paradigm, their old identity, the way they used to associate with all kinds of people and in relationship and see them thrive and see them really experience new relationship skills within their workplace, their relationships, their family, their friends, and with themselves. As you continue to grow spiritually, you're gonna really want to be able to count on your gut instinct, but you do want to make sure that it's also in sync with your subconscious mind and your conscious mind, which means it's current, it's up to date, it's living in the now, in the present moment, and it is not holding on to old fears and traumas from the past. Think about it for a minute. Every time you meet somebody, you're actually sizing them up and you're a lot more intuitive and psychic than you think you are. You're getting a sense of whether or not you can trust this person, whether you like them, you think they're funny, whether you wanna spend more time or whether you wanna lean back and kinda of move away or entirely leave the conversation altogether. This is your gut talking to you. Most often when you're having that gut feeling and that intuition in your gut, you're also having it in your brain, which is recalling and triggering old memories. So if you take these steps that I've shared with you and you take a moment to take that nice deep breath, center yourself, become present and realize, is this a pattern? Is this a repeat pattern? Am I seeing my own childhood or my old wounds on this new person? If you know that you have these types of patterns going on, it's really beneficial to listen to your gut because it will tell you what you've been holding on to and what you've been carrying forward with you. So when that new person shows up, you can look at them with clear eyes coming from the present moment as the resourceful, powerful, grown up that you are instead of the scared little child who's been hurt and wounded and expects this person to hurt you as well. Remember to trust your gut. Let's also make sure that your brain in your head and the brain in your gut are on the same page. If you like this video and learn something about the second brain and your gut instinct, go ahead and give me a like and make sure to leave me a comment below. I would love to hear about a time when you talked yourself out of trusting your gut and later found out that you should have. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you're notified every single time I upload a new video. Thanks so much for being here everyone. Have a great day.